Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're making this 90 degree corner brace. So we've done a few videos so far on how we can make simple shapes, there's a link to the playlist of that in the description. Now the whole idea of this is to use add-ons to make this as efficient as possible, though you could obviously do this without these add-ons, it just speeds up the process. So for this we'll be using machine tools and hard ops, I don't really think I'm going to need another add-on for this, if I do I'll mention it as we go. So the first thing we want to do is actually bring in a picture reference, so I'm just going to scroll to the side here from the top corner and I'm going to change this to an image editor and then I'm just going to go to image and then open an image. From that I can find the object, open image and I've got this here with all of the descriptions and sizes. Let's make that a little bit smaller. So we're going to start with a cube, so shift A, mesh and then bring in a cube and in the add cube box I'm just going to select this to be one of the sizes so we might as well go with the largest which is 40 millimeters. Scroll out a bit and then we're going to need to change the size on the other axes so let's go to item if you don't have the end menu just hit N and it will bring it out and we're going to change the dimensions on the Y and the Z so I'm just going to click and drag down to select both of those and we want those 35 millimeters. So we've already got the basics of this shape now importantly we'll need to correct the scale here, so I'm just going to control A and scale and set that back to 1. I don't think we're going to need the end panel anymore, so let's get rid of that. Now at this point we want to get the 3mm thickness that we can assume is on all of these edges, not just the one that's marked. There's loads of ways we could do this in terms of just cutting out different parts of the object. It's entirely up to you, but for me I'm just going to go into face mode, select these faces that I'm interested in with shift, and then I'm going to use hard ops by pressing Q, curve extract and hold down shift while I click it and that's going to create a shape that you can sort of see with this face fighting and at the bottom we've got how far we are going into this object so I'm going to go to 3 so I'm going to get close and then with hard ops what you do is you hold down shift and that means you then get finer control over the measurements so I'll go to 3 and then click and then we can hide that original cube now we're noticing this object that we have flat bits on the top and the bottom, it's not a perfect triangle which would be cool to make as well. So I want to move these but we only want to move it down to here. Now if I kept this modifier without applying it, I can't click on these individual points. So I need to actually go into object mode and apply this and I can go into vertex mode, click, shift click, shift click there and then using machine tools I can press Alt and A to align downwards. You will have to activate that in the add-on menu. Now this leaves us with a slight problem here which is that we've got this weird angle on this edge, this face here and that's because we've got this one at the back that's not lining up so I'm just going to Alt A there as well to make that work and you'll notice we've got a problem in theory but actually I'm just going to totally ignore this because I know that I only need to concentrate on this bottom half of the object, in fact it's actually the bottom quarter of this object or actually even less than a quarter if you really divide it up but effectively I'm just interested in this portion here and then everything else is going to get mirrored across. In fact we could probably do that now so I'm just going to Alt and X and then mirror that across and that is using hard ops. You can do a normal mirror, it just takes longer to set up and I can't be bothered. Next we're going to want to I think get the hole because this hole is going to be identical to the hole here. I don't actually have any of the measurements of where it is but we'll assume that it's relatively central to this face. So notice I'm not worrying about this back bit, I just want to mention that again. That's just me knowing that I only need to deal with one section. So I'm going to face mode, click here, shift and S. This again is machine tools as a pie and just bring my cursor to that face. You could do that without machine tools as always. And then I'm going to shift and A, mesh and bring in a cube which we're going to use to cut out this hole. I'm going to type that as 25 millimeters, just so it's the largest size. And actually we are going to need our end panel again. So let's just end to bring that out and then I want to change this on the X axis to 8 millimeters. Now once again we've affected the scale, so if I go into edge mode here, because we do want to bevel these, it does look like there is a slight bevel on this, which should probably make sense for a machined part. If I was to control and B this now, you can see we're going to get a very horrible bevel that's elongated on one side because the scale is not set to 1. So I'm just going to control and A, apply the scale, set that back to 1, go into edge mode, select those again, though they were already selected, control and B, and we can scroll this up. Now, just in case I want to change this later, what I'm actually going to do is press Q and go into bevel, and then I can set a bevel. I want my segments to be higher, 
that's just H to hide that menu so it's a bit clearer. So let's put those segments up to somewhere like 16, which is still probably excessive. Drag out to about there, and we've beveled everything, and then I can shift click, control and minus, and that's gonna get rid of that shape. Let's just H to hide that, and you can see what we've got. Now what's great about this is that at any point I can Q and then ever scroll. And if I do find out that these measurements are slightly wrong, I could G and then Y and move that around, or Q and then bevel and change the bevel amount as much as I wanted. Okay, let's H to hide that. And while we're here, I might as well bring in a representation of this bolt. Now to do that, we're gonna to go to Edit, Preferences, and we're gonna activate an add-on if you don't already have it, called Bolt Factory. This comes with Blender, just make sure that it's added, click Save Preferences, and then when we press Shift and A, Mesh, go all the way to the bottom, we've got this Bolt option, and we get this cool looking hex bolt. Now, I don't want this to be a hex bolt, I actually want this to be a cap, so it's rounded to match that, and the bit type we want is an Allen key from the look of it. Now, I can fiddle around with the measurements here if I want to, but I'm just gonna actually select that, and then just come to side view, X-ray mode, and then that's just S to scale that up, G and Z that down to about there. That looks about proportional. And then let's just right click and shade smooth by angle to get rid of that. If you are interested in the geometry of this all being perfect, do note that this is not the best geometry. Okay, we've got all of these little bits added here. You can sort this out if you really want to. I'll just add some vertices along here to combine everything together. In fact, I will just show that for one of these edges, just so if you really care about this, you can do it. So we need one, two, three, four, five extra vertices. So Control and E, we're going to subdivide this, and we want this to be five, go into vertex mode, and then I can just click there and there, and then one, there and there and one. This is gonna look horrible until the end. There we go. And that one button was using the smart vert function from machine tools. It's really great for speeding up cleanup. So you could do that for all of those edges should you want to. I'm gonna be honest, this is just to demonstrate that there's a bolt there. I don't really care. You could do that if you wanted to. Now we're gonna copy everything here onto this back edge which I said we don't need to worry about and we've made very ugly because of how we sorted out this corner at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to mirror this, which is gonna be at a weird angle. So instead of mirroring it, if I just Alt and X and do that, we're gonna have horrible problems. What I'm gonna do is go into edge mode and I'm gonna select that edge, Shift and S, and then I'm going to bring my cursor to that edge. Now we'll notice that this then puts this cursor at a very odd angle. Well, I say it's odd, it's literally halfway between this face and that face. So it's at 45 degrees. Now what that means is we're going to mirror along this line. So basically along there, or through the center of the cursor, I can't draw that accurately, which will fix everything for us. So I'm gonna just select this, then we want to Alt and X, and we get this modifier that's not where we want it to be, we want it to be on the cursor, so I'm gonna click here, and then mine is already at the cursor, if yours is not, it might be local, click to cursor, and then the angle of our mirror will be across that 45 degree angled cursor. And then as well as the transform orientation, we do also want to change the mirror pivot point as well to the cursor, for example, if we had an active object, it's going to be in the wrong place. So, cursor for both of those. Now we'll notice here that this one is grayed out. That's because we're now trying to select in an area or along an axis that isn't the axis that we've got already because we've already got this hard ops mirror in this direction, which we did at the beginning to sort out that side. So all we need to do is mirror modifier and go to new modifier and this will create a new modifier instead of adding to this previous one. So click there and we're good to go. Now I'm actually gonna do exactly the same thing for our bolt. So let's Alt and X, and again, we've got everything set up to work. Let's click there, and our bolt is ready to go as well. Now the final thing, if we just zoom in here, you can see there's a cutout here. Again, I haven't really got any sizes for this, so we'll just do a relatively basic cutout. And we're at a really good point to do this because our cursor is once again at 45 degrees still, and we want this to go at 45 degrees on this side. So let's Shift and A, Mesh, and bring in a cube, and where we've got the align, again, if you don't have this, just click to make it bigger. We're gonna change that to 3D cursor, so we're now aligned with that 45 degree 3D cursor. 
that's s and then y y so that's y twice to make that a bit smaller and then s and then x x to make that smaller here probably somewhere about there again we don't have exact sizes g and then x to bring that to the side and then g and then z z to move it in its local axis which means the axis in this instance of the cursor or of the object that was brought in on the cursor well, that's s and then z z to make that a bit smaller g and then z z to bring it back somewhere about there, that's probably too far along, so that's G and then X that out. And I'm not sure, this looks like it might taper slightly. So what I'm gonna do is go into face mode, select that face and then S and then Y, Y, no, X, X, my bad. And bring that in a little bit. And I think that might be beveled at the bottom. So control A, apply the scale, Go to edge mode, select that edge and that edge, control and B, and we'll just go for a bevel like that, and then control and minus, and we've got a problem that it's not showing up on the other side. That's only because this Boolean is occurring underneath this mirror. So let's just drag it up, and then we've got that on the other side. And let's hide that. And there we go. We've got our shape to the exact sizes that we wanted. Pretty quick and easy to do, making use of hard ops and machine tools to speed that process up. In fact, let's just scale that a little bit bigger and then bring that down to there. There we go. That looks a bit more right in terms of the size of those bolts. Again, if you do wanna see some more examples of some cool, simple shapes being made as efficiently as possible, there's a link in the description to the playlist on that. The one showing on screen is particularly fun. It shows what looks like a really complex shape for Blender, but it's actually quite easy to do once you know what you're doing. If you did find this video interesting, please do hit the like button. It helps share it around. And it also lets me know if you enjoy this sort of content and I'll do more things in the future. And if you want even more say about what I do in the future, there's a link in the description to the Patreon where you get these videos a week early, ad free, and you get more say and influence over what I do in future videos. For example, this was actually brought up by a patron and it seemed like a fun challenge. Have a great day, guys.